Uh, this webinar will be about uh, shielding applications with field field. And uh, today's speaker is known to many of visitors of our previous, previous webinars, Dr. James Claycomb from Houston Baptist University. Uh, he uh, previously presented webinars about superconductivity, biophysical, geo geophysical applications of field field. And today he will speak about shielding. He is author of two books, Applied Rigmagnetics and Intellectual Biophysics, and he used quick field in his classes for many years. So, uh, let's listen what he may tell us about using quick field for this kind of applications, for rigmagnetic shielding. James, please. Hi there. This is James Claycomb from Houston Baptist University, Department of Mathematics and Physics, also University of Houston, Texas Center for Superconductivity. And today, I'm going to be talking about quick field for electromagnetic shielding applications. A brief outline of some of the topics we'll be talking about. We'll be looking at shielding curves for conducting impermeable enclosures for a steel enclosure, our iron enclosure, and also looking at very highly permeable mu metal shields and superconducting shields. We'll look at the shielding factors both for axial and transverse field for these types of shields and also combinations of superconducting and mu metal shields. A uh, couple examples. And then we'll look at magnetically shielded rooms, both single layer copper magnetically shielded room and multi layer with, consisting of copper and mu metal. And then we'll model an a port so we can see the, the effect of, of doors and ports, that, how they affect the shielding factor of a magnetically shielded room. The next thing we'll look at, electromagnetic pulses due to lightning and high altitude nuclear detonations, as well as containing stray magnetic fields, for example, for motor applications. So the first simulation that I want to look at is uh, a highly, uh, not a highly permeable sphere, but a, an iron sphere. And we can model this in axial symmetry. So let me go ahead and open the, the quick field file here. Okay, so the model that we have is an iron sphere, and this is going to be an AC magnetic. This is the model file for the sphere, and you can see here, this is the air region. I'm looking at the block labels here. This is the air region, and this is, has a uh, permeability of 1, relative permeability of 1, and this is the steel, which has a permeability of 100 and a conductivity of roughly 10 to the 6 s per m. So this is an AC magnetics problem and if I look at the problem properties, this has uh, initially a 50 hertz frequency and we're going to sweep the frequency and look at the shielding factor as a function of frequency here. So this is almost a, the simplest possible shield and I just want to illustrate how we can look at the frequency dependence of uh, the field inside. Okay. Now the edge labels here, because I want to establish a uniform field in the z-direction, the, the z-direction is horizontal uh, to the page. And so on my left boundary, I can, I've can i assigned a zero tangential field, so the field lines are going to be perpendicular to this boundary. On the right, I've assigned zero tangential field as well. And on the side boundary, we have a constant flux function, which is going to give us a magnetic field along the z-axis that's going to be perturbed by the sphere and shielded from the interior. Okay. Now look at the solution here. It's already been solved. I can just look at the solution for this. And you can see these are the, the flux lines. The magnetic field is going to be along the flux lines here. And we can make a vector plot of the magnetic field. Okay. And we can look at a contour plot along a radial contour here 
from the center of the sphere to the edge where I've uh, made a contour. And we can see that the magnetic field um, along the radial contour here is very small inside the sphere and it increases uh, inside of the conducting region where this is a plot of the current density. I want to look at the flux density here. Okay. And then in the exterior region. So let's look back at the solution here. And I can use my pointer to look at the field values at different positions in here. Okay, so inside of the sphere, I can look at the, the magnetic field inside, and this has a, um, a flux density roughly <laughs> a factor of five lower than the exterior region. This is quite a large magnetic field here, obviously. Um, 23 Tesla outside, and this is like four Tesla inside. So the, the shielding property of this is not that great at 50 hertz. Okay. Um, what I want to do is I want to look at the shielding at one point in particular, and that's the, the point at the very center here. Okay. And as a function of frequency as well. So what I'm going to do is look at parametric analysis with label mover. Okay. And we got to set a base problem here. Okay. The base problem is the iron sphere. And now we're going to add values. Okay. So I'm looking at the test point. Okay. And I want the flux density at this test point. So we're going to add this flux density. Okay. Close. I'll record steps. Okay, we're going to change the problem properties here. Okay, the general problem properties and, and the frequency. Right now the frequency is 50. I'm going to increase it 100% in steps of 100%. Okay. So increasing the frequency by 100%, uh, now we have 100 hertz. And I'm going to repeat that last step. OK, now it's 200 hertz. And I continue to double 400 hertz. And we'll take this up to about 100 kilohertz. OK, with 12 kilohertz about 25, 50 kilohertz. That's 100 kilohertz. OK. And then we'll get the results here. So it's solving the problem. And this is the, um, the flux density root mean squared at the center of the sphere here. OK, it's rather large. And you can see that it's decreasing as we're increasing the frequency. So the the shielding of the sphere is going to be better at higher frequencies because of the relatively low permeability of the steel. And you can see that it's actually not monotonically decreasing. It is going to have some, the shielding curve is going to have some structure in it as well. OK, now we're approaching 100 kilohertz. So we can see our results. And we can see how the flux density inside of the sphere is actually changing as a function of frequency. And it begins to it decrease initially, then it rises again. And then it decreases as we're going to higher frequency. So this would be relatively ineffective at shielding low frequency fields if you were making highly sensitive magnetic measurements at low frequencies. And an iron sphere is probably not going to be your best uh, choice. OK. So I want to look at a mu metal cylinder, or 
different types of mu metal shields, where mu metal is a, a, nickel, a nickel iron alloy with a composition roughly 75% nickel, 15% iron, some copper and molybdenum. This has a relative permeability between 10 to the 4 and 10 to the 5. And this will be much better at shielding at lower frequencies. And I'll close the label mover here. Okay. So first let's look at a mu metal shield and we're going to look at XY coordinates. Okay. And this is our geometry. So this is simulating a um, new metal cylinder. And if I look at the, the block labels, so again, I have an air region with unit permeability. The mu metal has a permeability much higher than before. This is roughly 10 to the 4. And then my edge labels, for the bottom edges, I have zero tangential field. And for the top edge, I have zero tangential field. And I'm applying opposite vector potential to the left and right to establish a uniform field. There's no vertex defined in this model. OK. So we can go ahead and look at the solution. And you can see that the mu metal is channeling the, the field lines here. And we'll have some reduction, some screening in, in the central part. Okay. It turns out that mu metal is going to be better at shielding transverse fields. And this is an axial field, actually. Okay, so I'll make a contour along the central region. And we can look at the, the flux density along the central contour here. Okay, notice that we have some shielding here that the flux density is decreased inside of this. Uh, however, it is increased a little bit uh, around the edges of the shield. And that's going to be a property of mu metal. When you get close to an edge, you're going to get an increase in the background field, which is not very desirable for magnetic shielding to have an increase in the field, obviously. So let's look at the transverse case. I'll close these. OK. If we look at the transverse case, we have a cylinder now. Uh, now we're, this is still XY symmetry. The, the geometry, the problem, the solution range is the same as before, except now we're looking at uh, uh, a horizontal slice across the mu metal shield. And I, these are my, this is the air in the mu metal regions. Once again, we establish a uniform field using the same boundary conditions as before. And if we look at the shielding now, we can see that there's a, lo a lot better shielding in the central region due to uh, a transverse field. So the, actual, the axial field is not going to be shielded as well as a transverse field. Once again, we can make a contour plot across and look at the flux density. Okay. And we can see that, it, yes, indeed, it's uh, the shielding's a lot better inside. In fact, we can't see on this scale what the actual value is. So we can get out our tool look at individual point values in the solution region. OK. About 10 to the negative 7, or actually 10 to the negative 3 inside, and roughly 5 tesla outside. So that's a, a lot better shielding factor uh, for transverse field compared to a, a longitudinal field.